Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola, and thanks for joining us for another episode of The Road to Stardom. The 1997 U.S. Amateur was perhaps better known for who wasn't playing than who actually was, and that's because Tiger Woods, who had won the previous three contests, had turned pro and had already won the Masters that year. But the 1997 championship at Cog Hill would produce another winner who would go on to great things professionally. Enter Matt Kuchar, a tall, slender student at Georgia Tech. Here's some of the best moments from Kuchar's run to the title in 1997. ESPN presents a national championship conducted by the United States Golf Association. It's the 97th U.S. Amateur Championship. It's sunny, temperature in the high 70s just outside Chicago. Cog Hill Golf Club, one of the country's great public golf facilities this week, plays host to this 97th U.S. Amateur Championship. The original field of 6,666 entrants has been whittled to just eight who will battle today in the quarterfinals of the United States Amateur Championship. So to bring you up to date in the quarterfinal action here on this uh, beautiful Friday, in Illinois, Kribel six up through 12 against Jay Spug. Elders lead one up through 10 against Michael Boyd. Randy Lean two up through nine against Ryuji Amata. And all square through seven, Robert Gerwin the second and Matt Kuchar. Let's go out to the action. We go out to the eighth, the par four 380 yard eighth. And uh, this is Matt Kuchar to win the hole. All square with Robert Gerwin the second. Youngest player remaining 19. Come on, come on. Yeah. Oh, so Kuchar, one up through eight against Robert Gerwin the second. This is a match of the oldest player left, Gerwin at 30, and the youngest Kuchar at 19. And Kuchar winning the last two holes to um, actually be one up now. At the par five ninth, Matt Kuchar. A birdie putt to win the hole against Robert Gerwin the second. Butcher won up after winning the last two holes. Gerwin in with a par. Pretty quick putt right here coming down to the front of the green. Stands a long ways from it. Hello. Matt Kuchar, only 19, a sophomore to be at Georgia Tech, has won three straight holes and moves two up at the turn. Matt Kuchar, his dad, Peter, is caddying for him. Peter, uh, nine years ago, was the number one ranked tennis player, 35 and over, in the state of Florida. And his son, Matt, also an outstanding tennis player as a youth, twice a 12 and under champion in Florida. And here are the results of Kuchar. Beating Zimmerman Myung, who is only 16, the youngest to uh, make it to the match play, and John Rollins. So his uh, route has been uh, very competitive, but he has shown uh, that he can win under pressure. Matt Kuchar from the bunker, his fifth shot. Hmm. This is on tape moments ago in a terrific effort by Kuchar. Look at this. But he makes six, which meant Gerwin needed only to two putt to win the hole. The par three twelfth, Matt Kuchar on the tee. Here's a 193 yards downhill, about uh, 40 feet, so probably playing about 180 at the most. And he's hit a very fine shot, really a fine shot. His opponent, 13. This is Matt Kuchar for birdie to win the hole. Very similar setup uh, to Justin Leonard. He's got the ball, oh man, I guess 15 inches away from his feet. About six foot four. Right arm out like Justin. And sort of waved at that one. I don't know if that's going to get there. Maybe it is. That's a beautiful putt as it turns out. But they didn't quite compress it, you could tell. And it's a good putt. Conceded by Gerwin, who now must make a lengthy putt to have the hole. Have the hole, remain all score. Did you hit it? Did you hit it? I don't want to leave it short there. So 
Matt Kuchar, one up through 13. A lot of glide in this putt. You hit it about a third of the way and it'll glide the other two thirds. They only hit that for about a five foot putt. Beautifully judged. Seated, so Kuchar goes to 16, Dormy 3 against Robert Gerwin. Just seems like when you got that rosy of cheeks, you shouldn't be that clutch. Now Kuchar on the green in two, his opponent in three. And uh, Matt Kuchar, probably uh, of those uh, left in this championship in the quarterfinals, the the longest shot, 19 from Lake Mary outside uh, Orlando. He defeated Alan Zimmerman and James Myung, John Rollins, all in very tough matches. Uh, Zimmerman two and one, Myung one up, and Rollins one up. Well, if you look at his draw, he had, a, as it turned out at, on paper again, it looks like a fairly favorable draw. He didn't run into any guns uh, to speak of, and uh, was playing good golf, won two and one, one up, one up, and then, of course, here he's got an opportunity to win uh, four and two, but uh, uh, he's there, and uh, he's playing good golf. Well, maybe like a 19-year-old, Raj, but <laughs> a good 19-year-old. Just throw it out there to the right and cozy it up there and say thank you very much. Just needs two putts. And, uh, and that will be conceded. The match is conceded. Matt Kuchar, the winner, three and two over 30 year old Robert Gerwin. So um, it is a collegiate semifinals, if you will. Cribal of Stanford will play the University of Texas star Elder. I mean, oh, yeah, one more day. Two more days. Dad, Dad said a little tired after carrying the bag for 36 holes yesterday, but would love the chance to carry 36 more on Sunday in the finals. <laughs> There's a real happy dad, I'll tell you. One of them is 19-year-old Matt Kuchar. He is now with Roger Maltby. Thank you, Dick and Matt Kuchar. Congratulations on your three and two victory over Robert Gerwin. Uh, never been in the amateur before, and you find yourself in the semifinals. What are your thoughts on this at this point? God, I was just glad not to go to 18 again. Had to do that twice yesterday. Boy, it's, it's so exciting. Match play is just the adrenaline is pumping. You know, your heart's rushing. Everything is just it's so intense out there. You know, I'm still shaking. Well, we see so many of the guys that really it looks like another day at work, another day at the office. But you look, you have a big smile on your face. You look like you're having fun all the time, are you? Yeah, I'm having a great time. You know, this is just a blast seeing you out here. We talked to Johnny Miller this morning. It's been a ton of fun. Your tennis, you used to play a lot of tennis before you really took up golf. Do you think any of your preparations in tennis have helped you at all with golf? You know, I did a lot as a junior, and this format's a lot like tennis. You know, you lose and you're out. And that's, that's the tough thing about match play. You don't want to go home. And that's, that's what makes it so exciting. Well, you brought your dad along, Peter Kutcher, to uh, give you a little advice. So what's he doing for you? He carries the clubs. <laughs> you know, I tell him to stay out of the way the rest of the time. He gets yardage, too. And uh, we just have a good time out there. It's, it's a lot of fun having him on the bag. Well, how nervous are you getting watching your son? We talked to Raymond Floyd, who was caddying for Robert, and he said he was more nervous doing that than he gets when he's playing. How about your experience? When I came on Saturday, my hair was black. <laughs> and I look at this. <laughs> this is just five days. So I don't know what's going to happen the next day or so. But, God, is it fun. This is the most exciting thing I've done. Now I see where you get it from. You get it from your dad, huh? <laughs> That's, for sure. That's for sure. Well, good luck to you tomorrow. You'll meet Randy Lane in one of the semifinal matches, and uh, best of luck the rest of the week. Good. Too. Thanks okay. a lot, Roger. Back to you, Dick. But at the turn, match two today, Indiana University's Randy Lean against another Walker Cupper against 19-year-old Georgia Tech sophomore Matt Kocher. Kocher is from Lake Mary, Florida, outside uh, Orlando, and he came out blazing at the par four first hole. Birdie putt for the lead. At the par four third, Kocher's second shot. And that would set up another birdie. The underdog coacher continues to smile two up after three. Now at the par four fourth hole, the magic for the former tennis star continued. A 50 foot bomb. 
And Matt Kutcher had vaulted to a three-up lead after birdieing three of the first four holes and maintains his lead. Kutcher three-up after eight. Now must make this sizable putt to have the hole. He's the youngest of the four semifinalists. Third-team All-America is a freshman with the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech last year. ACC Freshman of the Year, his first appearance in the United States Amateur. His dad is his caddy, his father Peter. It's a family of tennis players, but uh, both father and son taking up this game and excelling at it. Well, Dick, I think this is a huge putt from a momentum standpoint. He's been a little shaky since he bogeyed both six and seven. Oh, uh, well stroked. That's quite a have and saluted by Father Peter, who is uh, in the insurance business. And Matt has a great smile, and he's used it often this week uh, with his terrific play. He remains three up at the turn. Finger down the shaft, right finger. Good looking putt. Oh, oh darling. Great try, Matt. Not ready. Couldn't hit any better, Gary. Just ran out of speed, John. Just an ounce more, and it goes right in. John, you were talking about the pressure. You know, this match was so well played early on with birdies and pars and chances at birdies. And it's gotten a little sloppy here now these last two or three holes. No, nope. uh, that's the first short putt I have seen him miss in four days of watching him play. So Matt Kocher moves to four up through ten. Hard to believe a bogey win in that hole. Matt Kuchar now left with 183 yards. A very difficult hole location, as Johnny has talked about. Bunker on the left in play. And this is a five iron. I would think he'd want to keep this ball right of the flag. He's aiming right, Gary. Does he play a draw sometimes? Well, not much of one, John. Most of the shots straight are left to right. Well, he's got this ball slightly right of the flag, turning a little bit toward the flag stick. He just killed it. That's about 50 feet, 60 feet past the hole in the very back uh, hole location that we saw earlier in the week. He was competing in his first U.S. Amateur. It's been the thrill of a 19-year-old's lifetime, one that he has been able to share with his caddy father, Peter, father and son working together and sharing each other's dreams. That is pretty intense, um, you know, from playing tennis, you know, he's just got, you know, some fire in his eyes and, uh, you know, I try to keep him calm. I, you know, he, he wants to be there because he's a golfer and he, you know, he knows what to do. And so that's good, but he, he wants to do everything, you know, and sometimes I got to tell him to back off. The 19 year old coacher then explained his unique pre-shot routine. It's, it's a focus deal. It's how I get focused. I kind of just block everything out. And when I close my eyes, you know, I try and block out all the negatives and just focus in almost like you see a triangle and everything goes at the pin or at your target. And that just clears my mind and helps me really to get focused. And it, it's helped tremendously. It's amazing how powerful the mind is. The two finalists of this U.S. Amateur Championship earn an invitation to play next year in Augusta. Qualify to play the Masters is almost beyond my belief. Uh, it, it'd be a dream come true to do that. You know, I definitely have to have my dad on the back there. Uh, I played there this year with Georgia Tech. We ended up going, the whole team got on Augusta National. And I remember hitting range balls. I, I just, at first, I just watched the rest of the team hit range balls and I was like, what are you doing taking divots? You know, this is Augusta National. And, <laughs> So finally I got the nerve up to hit some balls and we're just picking them real clean, afraid to, you know, scuff the turf there. And we played and it was the, the fastest round I've ever played in my life, it felt like. You know, the holes just went by and you, you were so sad to see one go, yet you were so happy to see the next one, you know. It was just so cool to be out there. The smiling, rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. Coach are the only member of the Final Four not to play in the Walker Cup. It's pretty impressive to play some Walker Cup boys. They're, they're all good guys, though. I've gotten to know them all, you know, on a personal basis, and they're all good guys. You know, I enjoy them. And they, they know me. Um, 
But the, the other people, it's, it's kind of funny. The, the galleries, you know, may not know my name, but they're out there and they kind of like my smile. They do indeed uh, enjoy his smile. He's learned already there's nothing wrong with trying to give that good relax that you're having a good time feeling. And I thought that was a very interesting comedy made, made about the mind is a powerful thing and using that to kind of see his target, that visualization. It's a unique thing. I've never seen anybody else do that uh, procedure of closing your eyes. Maybe I'll try it putting. <laughs> Plan 138. Huh? That's right. I got all the tips. Well, Johnny, he better do some very powerful visualizing on this putt. Close to 80 feet. Big break from right to left, right through the middle of it. Last part of the putt downhill. Gonna throw it over there near the edge. Swings off that brow. Gonna be a little short, but not bad, huh, Gary? Well, not bad, but uh, still a good six, maybe even seven feet. Follow here at 12, Lean and Kucher. Lean needs something to happen on his side. He's four down and running out of holes. Well, and Dick, he's had the opportunities. Uh, Matt Kucher has uh, struggled here, but uh, Randy Lean is struggling right along with him. So uh, the golf has not been pretty the last few holes. Kucher now with this putt from out of the intermediate cut of rough. About 20 feet coming back up the hill should move a little bit to his left. This group has been warned about slow play, so they are playing a little quicker. Uh, there's one. Hello. Boy, that, that hurts right there if you're a Randy Lean fan. That didn't never at any point did it look like a par, did it, Gary? Let's take a look at this reaction. Dad will definitely be pumped. <laughs> 1988, the dad was the number one ranked uh, tennis player in the 35 and overs in Florida State. Now Lean, really pressure. He has to make this one, you think. Now this is about 12 feet. It also back up the hill and turning a little to the left. Randy Lee now has five down and six holes to play to Matt Kuchar. Now the Georgia Tech sophomore to be in command while Kribal and Elder are all square. Meanwhile back at the par four 13th. And the third shot for Matt Kuchar from the right bunker. Both players found the right bunker with their second shots. Plenty of green to work with. That's a well executed shot. And puts the pressure right back on Randy Lean. Take a look at this form here. Low hands, open face, very quiet leg action. Look at how quiet that is. Nothing on the backswing and just a little lean in. That's all it is, a little lean in on the follow through, no turning. It's just uh, the ball hasn't gone in the hole and we all know some days are like that. This putt to win the match for Matt Kuchar to be in the finals for the U.S. Amateur Championship and win a trip to next year's Masters. Matt Kuchar, six and five, defeats Randy Lane. You're the best. <laughs> dad Man. Peter there. <laughs> wow. There is a pumped up dad all week long. He's been there. He's calm down, dad. <laughs> but that's a great time. A great time to be pumped. Now, Thursday, he carried the, the bag for 36 holes. He said, I'd love to have a chance to go 36 again. That would mean tomorrow. Let's go to Gary Koch. All right, thank you very much, Dick, here. I'm with a couple of very happy coochers, that's for sure. Matt, how about that start, huh? <laughs> that was incredible. I, I don't know what was going on out there. You know, I, I hit in the rough off of one and hit just a f phenomenal shot out of the rough to about eight feet and made the putt. And, you know, Randy hit a great drive in the fairway, hit a, you know, real solid first shot. And for him to lose the hole, that, that was pretty big. How about the putt at four? A putt at four, my God. You know, that that was incredible. Trying to two putt there, no brainer. No brainer. That was just like our last though. What was that? 12, another one. It was phenomenal. It was just my day. Well, you know now you're qualified for next year's Masters with this win. What do you think about that? 
<laughs> I'm going to the Masters. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, God, I can't wait. Oh, my God, that's, that's so exciting. Dad, how about the uh, championship match now? Another 36 holes tomorrow. Are you going to make it all right? I'll make it. I'll fly around this golf course. My feet will never touch the ground. This has been just so exciting. It's so much fun because sports is my passion, and to have a clone that is just does everything you want him to do, only he's bigger, smarter, stronger, and better looking, it's just, it's just great. It's so rewarding. Well, congratulations to both you guys, and we'll go back to Dick. Thank you. All right, it's a very athletic family. The father of... Uh... Peter, the grandfather of Matt, was a great football player at the University of New Hampshire. The Coochers celebrate. They're in the finals for the U.S. Amateur. First USGA president and see these names etched in silver. We met Evans, Jones. It's the Hall of Fame history of the sport. Lawson Little, Littler, Palmer, Nicholas. More recently, Watkins, Stadler, John Cook, Mark O'Meara, Phil Mickelson, Justin Leonard, and of course Tiger Woods with that unprecedented run, winning the last three amateur championships. Uh, it, was, it was powerful <laughs> just to see the names up close. Yeah, no doubt about it. I look at my career, and at the time I didn't realize what I was missing, but now when I look back, historically, uh, I got the junior and I got the open, but um, now it's too late to covet the amateur, but I'll tell you, the amateur is such a huge event, and uh, it was the most important event in, event in golf not that long ago, so uh, it's nice to see that those great names carry on their career, and it, it, when you win this championship, it really, the momentum and the confidence building that comes from uh, hauling that trophy and saying, I've been the amateur champion is really big, really big. And it's no short trip. It's an endurance test. They played two rounds of stroke play and then match play, and it comes down to this final championship day, 36 holes of golf. Let's go to the first 18 holes. The action underway. Through 12 holes, Matt Kuchar won up. This is his third shot at the par 4 13th. Kreibel is on the green in three. A little surprising going with a putter, uh, going through that much fringe, but he is putting uphill. Not a lot of break. Hops big time, but how about hops in the hole? Well, Kuchar captures 13 to take a two-up lead over Joel Kreibel. Let's go to the par 3 14th, playing 180 yards today. That's a good par 3. Uh, it drops down about 30 feet from an elevated tee. You can see the, the green there ringed by six bunkers uh, in the center and bottom part of your screen. The whole location today is way back left. And take a look at it uh, from the tee. You can tell it's downhill from there, but not as much as if you're back there. But Again, you can see that uh, whole location right behind that second bunker on the left. See the pre-shot routine of Matt's with the eyes closed, saying sort of collecting himself, triangulating. Roger. Yeah, this is a seven here, John. Choking down on it does that on a lot of shots. He's shaping this ball right to left. If it's the right distance, it should come off the slope toward the hole. He's on a little run right now, Roger. He's really playing well, John. He's, he, the enormity of the moment it just hasn't hasn't seemed to gotten to him at all. He's uh, very well composed, and, you know, I think uh, on paper I would have to say Joel Kreibel is the more talented player of the two, but uh, Matt Kuchar is, is playing at the top of his abilities. Well, I sat down with this lipo likable young man and asked if he takes any ribbing back at Georgia Tech for that ever-present smile. It's not like school, you know, I'm having just a blast up here. At school, I'm busting my fanny to make grades and play good golf, you know, we stay pretty busy at school. But, you know, I pretty regularly have a smile on my face, I enjoy it, and up here I'm having the best time of my life. Especially to be here with my father and to have him see everything is great. And the gallery seems to respond to that. They feel that you're enjoying yourself, so they enjoy you. Yeah, you know, golf needs somebody like this, you know. Like Tiger, everybody got behind him because he was kind of a Jimmy Connors of, you know, as tennis. He pumps his fist and kind of gets the crowd going that way. And I, I've always wanted to be more of like an Arnold Palmer as, you know, I relate it to the crowd. You know, I feel like I'm one of them. I can talk to them and smile with them. And, you know, I enjoy it that way. Uh, you're only 19. But golfers seem to have a better sense of the great players that have preceded them. And in your case, one of the greatest and arguably the greatest of all time is a graduate from Georgia Tech. Are you aware of that? 
Bobby Jones. A 73-year span between Bobby Jones winning the first of his five U.S. Amateur titles and your opportunity today to be the national amateur champion. How does that sound to you? Oh, God, that's... It's got a ring that's incredible, but, you know, no matter what happens, I've been saying all week, you know, after I won a couple matches, I was just kind of saying, whatever happens from here on in, it's been just a phenomenal run. The difficulty is uh, well defined by the fact that 6,600 plus entrants tried to become the U.S. Amateur Champion and you're down to the final two. <laughs> I've said that every night as I go further in match play, you know, all right, on the top 64 now, and then, all right, after, you know, the next day, it was the top 32, and all right, I'm the best 16, the best eight, final four, and now, you know, it's down to me and Joel and just two of us competing for the U.S. Amateur. It, it's going to be a heck of a day. And um, it's been a heck of a day, and what a week. This is a very makeable putt, you know. This is the kind of putt I love. You just sort of get it started online and it feed itself. He's aiming a little left, it looks like. It's moving right, see if it flattens out. Another swish. They're going in. They don't have to go in, but they are. Three birdies in a row, Roger. Very impressive with the putter right now. Just over 12 feet. We'll move from his right to left. Not an easy putt at all, but he's been hot with the putter. Unusual grip. Got index fingers in both hands way down the shaft. Oh, and another one right in the center. Unbelievable. He is making the putts. That, that uh, is tough to take when you're playing a guy that's doing that, isn't it, Roger? Uh, it's disheartening, and, uh, but it's also hard to do for 36 holes, John. You can get a stretch of that. Kutcher now has the ball well above his feet, has 153 yards to the hole. Uh, it's a much better angle than Joel Cropper really had to play. Keeps his ball right at the hole at will, feet to the left. Probably an 8-iron, no? This is an 8-iron, John, yes. It's a pretty opportunity. Ball starting to turn just right of the hole. Good looking shot. Advantage Kutcher. Take a look at the scorecards on the front side. Kreibel jumps out to a two up lead, winning one and three with pars, and then it was Kutcher with a win at five and at six. And one eighth hole with a par and uh, Kreibel answered with a par win at nine so they were all square after nine holes and then the run of birdies by Kucher who is playing uh, terrific golf here come on it's a nice run two three two you don't see that too often wow wow I jinxed him. There's the first lip out, John. <laughs> How pure was that putt, Roger? Wow. Uh, you thought it was in, I'm sure. I mean, at halfway, that, I thought he had drained it again. Well, I'm sure he did, too. <laughs> Still got a little spring in that step. You tennis players just don't go down easy, do you, Dick? <laughs> Father Peter, who uh, is living every moment, he said he has never had a week like this in his entire life. He just enjoyed it thoroughly, and what dad wouldn't? Kreibel would win 17, Kucher won 18, so they finished the morning round. Kucher, three up. The 97th U.S. Amateur Championship. We welcome you back to Cog Hill after the morning 18. Matt Kuchar, three up against favorite Joel Kreibel. This afternoon they began parring the first three holes. Then on the 22nd, number four here at Cog Hill, Kreibel needed this par putt to have the hole. And 19-year-old Matt Kuchar was four up to number six, the 24th hole of play today. Kreibel, again, par putt to have, short. A painful miss, and Kuchar's lead to five up. 
to the seventh, the 25th hole to play today. A short par putt for Kocher. He makes and he goes six up. All pars for Kocher today. Now to the eighth hole, third shot. Kucher's in the bunker here with a longish bunker shot. And it's a beauty in there, really a gimme range and uh, another clutch shot. Gallery. Not Excuse me, Kreibel, who was in the same bunker, John, needs this putt for par to have the hole. He was also in the bunker, hit a pretty good shot, and again, misses a short putt. The exchanges are all going Kucher's way. Now the ninth hole, 27, third shot for Kreibel. Very awkward little pitch shot, but he hits it perfectly. Just textbook with a lot of spin, two and a half feet away. He'll make that putt now six down. We go ahead to the 10th hole. Birdie putt to win the hole. Can he win back to back? Get a good iron in there. And he makes it, so who knows what might happen. His first two birdies of the day, so Matt Kuchar's lead from seven up to five up, but just eight holes to play, and Kreibel will have to muster something really heroic, mm -hmm. even beyond Tiger Woods' capabilities to win this U.S. Amateur Championship. And Kuchar, even with a big lead, or even after losing the last two holes, his demeanor doesn't change. No, he's a, he's a very likable guy. In fact, on the driving range uh, uh, between the two matches, uh, it was amazing because uh, Kreibel left the practice tee and everybody stayed to watch Matt. And I said, how come everybody didn't go over to the tee? And they said, the kids just love this Matt Kuchar, the way he smiles, easy demeanor. He'll talk to people. And, you know, Joel's a nice guy, too. But Matt's got that little bit of glow that uh, is very unusual. He's got that magic, the youth, the teenager, and the kids relate to that. Green to work with, John. Much better angle than, say, had he been further left and out in the fairway. Doesn't have to cross that bunker, right? No, he does not. Talking about the bunker that's left and just short of his shot right there. He's just going to skirt it along there. And uh, actually, a little surprising that he would go left of the whole uh, location. You see the yellow jacket head cover, Georgia Tech uh, destination in a couple of weeks. He'll be a sophomore. Larry Mize, David Duval played at Tech. And of course, the most famous golfer out of Georgia Tech, Bobby Jones, who finished his degree work as a mechanical engineer. Welcome back. We're at the 12th here at Cog Hill. Matt Kuchar, five up, his second shot. This is about an 85-foot bunker shot, John. Tough one. One thing that'll help him is the wet sand, though. It'll come out a little longer and it'll give him a chance to get it to the hole. That's just a wonderful play from there. What a short game this young man has, Johnny. That's one of the hardest shots in golf, but that, that nice, firm sand did help in that instance. Uh, fluffy sand is very hard to get it uh, to the hole from there. And Joel Burry's also the 28th, and now he's lost the last hole with a bogey. So down to four up. He's four up with six to play. Uh, Roger, how about the tee shots? Well, Kutcher on the right side of the fairway, this 160 yards. This is seven iron. front right hole location very this, small target this ball going at the left side of the green and just on uh, another good tee shot this going down the right center ideal Reminder, if Kuchar wins this hole, he is the 97 U.S. Amateur Champion, but his opponent has played the last seven holes, three under, and has won five of them. And Matt Kuchar has 182 yards to the hole. And Johnny, that bunker to the right of the hole, if you leave the ball hanging out, can get in there rather easily. It's short, shorter than the hole is deep in the green. This is a five iron. This is a good looking shot, drawing just left of the hole. Boy, that was perfect drive and really an excellent second shot, Roger. Just striped them both. See the Georgia Tech yellow jacket on the ball again, electing to putt. This will move to his right. It's right all the way. But a good lag and a nice four. Puts the pressure squarely on Joel Kreibel's shoulders. 
And if Jill does not make that putt, um, uh, Matt will be dormy. He will be two up with two to play. So this is really an important putt to get it in somehow. Well, let's check it out. tentative stroke there. Very surprised at that, John. That was a little bit of a scared looking stroke. That made no sense whatsoever. Conceded. So they have the hold. And 19 year old Matt Kuchar, Dormy 2 as they go to 17. 97th U.S. Amateur to follow the great run of three straight by Tiger Woods. That's a good chance for Matt really to take it out right here with a good drive in the fairway. He's done that, John. It's going down the left center of the fairway, but it looks to be pretty good. That is going to be in great shape. Wow, that's a huge advantage right there. Well, Matt Kuchar safely in the fairway at 17. Two up, two to play. Kreibel in trouble. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and Matt's, that must be thinking, what, what the heck happened there? But um, he, I think he's got it back together. That 16th hole is big for him. The good drive, the good second, good putt, good drive here. So he's really hit uh, four excellent shots in a row. That's 129 to the hole here, John. This is a big pitching wedge. This is just left of the hole. Good looking shot. Now that is a pressure answer from young Kuchar. We asked him uh, what it would mean to be the United States Amateur Champion. Winning the U.S. Amateur, what would it mean to me? I, I, I still can't put it into perspective yet. Um, you know, I've had all kinds of guys from back home at my club at Heathrow talk to me and say, you know, you can do it. You're, you're the type of guy that can win the U.S. Am. And they've all urged me on. But to win it, to really be able to have my name on the trophy, you know, I could almost quit golf and be happy. I, it would be just a dream. That would be, that'd be the pinnacle of my life so far, to win the U.S. Amateur. Might go a little left, John, but not, in a, not a lot. Maybe right edge or inside right edge, but back uphill. Something you got to hit firm. Can't be lagging this one. watching his aim and he was out there about three inches and I think he could have made it inside right, maybe right edge. Well, there you have it uh, in a second here, Matt. It's very unusual, very unusual to have this applause, Roger, at this stage of the match. I, in fact, I've never heard this before. Never. I think uh, that was in recognition of Joel Crabble's comeback, John. I think the crowd realizes just two putts to win the match and that was just saying, well done to Joel. Makes the putt, he wins three and one. Two putts, two and one. Defeats the 20 year old and Father Peter. <laughs> oh boy, that's a great moment right there. Dad Peter. That's uh, a lesson for all young people. Don't lock the door on your dreams. Let those dreams happen as they can come through. And as uh, Kreibel watches uh, Kucher celebrate, Kucher said, Gee, I just hope I could get here. Then I'd could I possibly get to match play? And they said, wow, now I'm in the 36s and 16s, 8s. Whoa, <laughs> top four, final four, he says. <laughs> Let's go to Roger. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Matt Kuchar, congratulations. The 97th U.S. Amateur Champion, how's it feel? Oh, it's incredible. The, 
my whole body's shaking right now. It's so much fun. I mean, the, the adrenaline is pumping. To, to finish off, it, it was too bad just to have to lag that last putt. But to finish off with the strong par and knocking it close like I did was was phenomenal for me to do that. Joel played phenomenal, you know. Coming down the stretch, I give him all the credit in the world because he, he made this thing into a great final. Well, I was going to say, with your 7-up lead, all of a sudden he's chipping away, chipping away, momentum is switched. What's going through your mind when all this, your big lead is evaporating? I, I kept counting down holes. I'm thinking, you know, I'm 7-up with 10 to go. Maybe, you know, just make, you know, have three holes and I'm doing all right. And I just kept counting down and uh, I was making pars. You know, I made one or two bogeys and that was it. And Joel just played phenomenal. And it, it got so exciting down to the end. It, it didn't get, I, I couldn't ask for a better finish. Congratulations. Dick, back to you. All right, we'll have the, uh, the championship trophy presentation. Always exciting. We'll uh, hear from Joel Kreibel as well. And look ahead, just a month away is the Ryder Cup. So don't wander away. Matt Kocher has won the 97 U.S. Amateur Championship. Welcome back to Cog Hill. And now the presentation of the 97th U.S. Amateur Champion, and that's president of the USGA, Judy Bell, with the two finalists, the winner, Kutcher, and Joel Kreibel, the runner-up. Judy, by the way, is concluding her term as president of the USGA, the first woman to be Ladies so honored. And gentlemen, it was such a great match, and it was two wonderful players, and we came out here together. But I'm now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the 1997 United States Amateur Champion, Matt Kuchar. And I will, I'm going to turn Matt over to Roger Maltby from NBC for a quick interview. Well, thank you, Judy, and congratulations again, Matt. I mean, you're getting so big so fast, they're starting to call you Cooch now. You're coming up with one of those <laughs> nicknames. Uh, that's been my name for a while. Everybody in school, everybody that knows me calls me. And it, it was just, it was pretty funny to hear everybody in the crowd yell it out, you know. It was like old times. Well, now that this one's over, uh, you turn your thoughts ahead to next April. And what do you think about being paired with Tiger Woods in the first round of the Masters? <laughs> Oh my God, I don't know what to say. That, that's going to be phenomenal, you know. I've never had a chance to play with him. Every time we've uh, been entered in the same tournament, he's ended up dropping out at the last minute. And now to be able to really play with him at the Masters of all places, it'll be just incredible. Well, don't worry about that, because after that, at the open in June, you get to play with Justin Leonard and Ernie Els there in the first two rounds. <laughs> well, that's way too deep for me, Raj. <laughs> Well, tell us about your dad. He was there. Uh, uh, Peter, why don't you come on in? Peter Kucher. He was there by your side all week, and I know that must make it all the more special, having your dad with you. It really has, Raj. You know, to have him here is just super special. And your thoughts, Peter. Uh, sharing this with your son has got to be something uh, you'll never forget. Absolutely. I can't even think of what comes in second. You know, my, Matt and my dad and myself are lifelong Red Sox fans. And you know, from 1967 to 75 to the playoff game in 78, and who can forget 1986, to all the Red Sox fans out there, this is what it feels like to win. And as they would say in Boston, <laughs> it's wicked cool. <laughs> all right, Judy, if you'd present the Havermeyer Trophy to Matt Kuchar. I'll be happy to. Love to. Here you are. Uh, I can't believe this happened. This is, this is awesome. Uh, At the Theodore Havemeyer Trophy, named after the first USGA president, and uh, before we leave, we congratulate Judy Bell on her reign as the current president. Uh, during her term, record attendance, record entrance, and she continues to do so many good things that benefit junior golfers. She's been a great friend, and we wish her well. Wherever past presidents go, you know it'll be involved with golf.